Hi there, Ramit here for Phone Rad and this is the Huawei's P9 smartphone review. Now this is a smartphone which I have been testing for more than a week right now and I would say this could be the DSLR replacement of 2016. Now before you start judging, this isn't a DSLR replacement for professionals but those amateurs who just use a DSLR to capture most of their photos in the auto mode and in that case this job, camera does a fabulous job. Moving on, let's talk about the phone itself. The phone comes with the super fast fingerprint scanner on the back that unlocks the phone within 0.5 seconds and along with that it comes with a 5.2 inches full HD display. Talking about the device it also comes with all the buttons and the slots on the right and the on the right. While on the bottom you have the USB type C charging port, the 3.5 mm jack and the speaker grill. On the top you have a beautiful design with no other buttons and on the left you have the sim card and the micro SD expansion slot. Do make a note that this phone comes with just one sim card slot and there's only an option of expanding your internal storage which is by default 32 GB since this is a 3 GB RAM variant uh, to up to the micro SD card you insert. Moving on to the camera, the device comes with a front camera of 8 megapixel with an aperture of f2.2 while the rear is a dual 12 megapixel camera. Now that's the most important USB of this smartphone. This camera technology has been made in partnership with Leica and you can seriously see a huge difference in terms of the camera's captures and the performance. It's not just the rod sensors but the post processing and the software enhancement which makes the pictures come out to be great. Now let's talk about the detailed review of the camera in a few moments. Before that let's talk about the device form factor. Talking about the device it comes with 3000mAh of battery and has a good one hand hold form factor and the device is also pretty slim if you notice in the thickness point of view when you compare it with the Galaxy S7 or the LG G5 you would feel that this is a better device in terms of uh, holding the phone and also the way it's pretty much slimmer and the Galaxy S7 is easily prone to damages because of the glass panel but this one has an aluminium back panel which makes sure that this does not at least break while you just do a casual drop from your waist height or even a shoulder height. So that said this is a decent uh, smartphone in terms of the build, the hardware but talking about the performance it comes with a uh, skin from Huawei which is something which I personally don't recommend. At least again in terms of Samsung they have also been pushing the touchways but that's again something a person's choice and that's more easy to understand UI while this one looks a little bit harder to get accustomed to for the first time if you're using it. But that said, if you just skip it and start using the Google Launcher, then your job is all done. But apart from that, the performance is decent and uh, you cannot actually compare it with the Galaxy S7. And if you're a person who is planning to buy a new smartphone in the premium segment, then this could be the best recommended smartphone at a price of around 35,000 rupees because the Galaxy S7 is still selling at around 48,000 rupees. In terms of the price point, I would still say that if you have a budget, then you should be going for Galaxy S7. And the second best option would be the Huawei P9. Earlier, there was OnePlus 3, but again, if you compare the OnePlus 3 camera with the Huawei P9 camera, you would really see the difference in terms of the performance and all the other factors. Forget the 6GB RAM because that's not something you would be really using throughout your day. I mean, you wouldn't be editing videos on your smartphone, right? So that's a point which is uh, to be not taken into consideration but if you talk about the camera then that's something you should be taking a look at. Now this smartphone comes with a dual 12 megapixel rear camera wherein one of the sensor captures photos in RGB while the other one captures photos just in black and white that's in monochrome mode. Now the advantage to this is that uh, because the second sensor just captures photos in black and white, it allows in more light and uh, offers you with uh, better captures and also better uh, depth of field fo photos. Now let's uh, move on to the camera sample which are captured with the smartphone rather than just looking into the specs to ensure or to check out how good the camera is. The camera is actually powered with the Leica technology as I mentioned earlier and it comes with the dual LED flash. And the, assisted, and the laser assisted focus. So let's uh, check out some of the camera samples. So now these are some random shots, nothing. I didn't even use a tripod uh, for capturing any of these photos. So you can notice that the captures have turned out to be pretty good enough. The first one is just a random shot captured by my five year old son who had the phone in his hand. And uh, this was based on the depth of field simulation mode where you can notice that there's a lot of uh, blur on the background but that said it also looks like an artificially edited photo rather than looking like a photo which was captured from a, a smartphone or a, even a dslr that if you notice let's move on to more photos now this is a capture which was done in monochrome mode you can notice that it adds a different perception itself like this is a regular shot doesn't really look unique but again if you capture in uh, black and white it does look a very different uh, shot in itself 
few more uh, background defocus shots if you notice uh, i was able to focus on just this small uh, branch of this uh, plant rather than focusing on everything now here is another good example of this camera's uh, capabilities if you see both the cameras are it on it's doing its job and i was able to focus on uh, the front leaves and the bark of the tree but in the next capture i was able to also focus on this area which was actually brightened up because the focus was only on the frontal area and now you can see everything was uh, perfectly darkened in the front but in the background everything was clear and uh, crispier moving on to more shots you can see these are some more uh, photos again the captures of these uh, flowers and uh, these leaves are pretty much normal not over saturated and they are decent enough when you compare this with the galaxy s7 you will notice that the galaxy s7 captures come out to be over saturated and that's because of the software enhancement and the post processing which happens on the galaxy s7 now here is an uh, example of the uh, zoom in feature of the galaxy uh, of the huawei p9 now if you notice this isn't a large uh, flower or a bud but these are small uh, things and the camera has done a fabulous job in capturing this bee with a lot of details let me try to show you another shot of uh, the same when you can notice that uh, these were very little buds but before that let me show you some other capture so here is the regular sand and uh, the leaves capture but if you notice in the black and white view it looks very different you would have never thought it would look this way now the camera also comes with an uh, option wherein you can also focus or uh, refocus later on so let me just show you a demo of the same now the camera comes with the wide aperture effects when you can focus or refocus on uh, specific portions of your captures later on so if you notice here you can uh, focus on any of the area after you capture the photo and that's something interesting so here let me show you some more captures which i have done with these uh, options now if you can see here, here are my kids uh, who are cycling on the street and uh, I was able to focus, I was able to actually focus on my son's uh, face first but using the camera's capabilities I, would able, I was able to carry focus on my daughter's face. Uh, let me move on, here is another capture of a street dog, you can notice it really adds a different dimension itself, if you notice this was a regular shot in color mode but if you move back to the black and white it looks like a very different capture itself and looks like something which was captured with the DSLR. Let's move on and here are a few more shots in black and white and color. You can notice a huge amount of difference and uh, this is another mode which is available under night mode options of this smartphone. Now talking about the night modes, the camera also comes with four different uh, sub modes under the light or low light mode and here you can see the first one is the tail lights which is uh, something which you would like to capture when you are on a street with which captures all the tail lights and then there's a light graffiti mode I'll be showing you the camera samples which I've done with that. Then there's a silky water and the star track. So let's move on to the camera samples. It's first and show you the same. So here is the light graffiti. After first, second, third and fourth try, I was actually able to capture a good light graffiti capture. And here are all the results of the same. Let's move on. And here is the shot I had mentioned earlier about. And where you can notice that these were very little buds and the insect was also very small or minute. And still the camera was able to capture it in great detail. Moving on, here is a capture which was done in uh, night but without a tripod. Now that's very important if you want to capture a very good night capture then you need to have a tripod in your hand or you need to hold it perfectly. Let's move on and uh, show you some more camera samples. So here is a random shot of a plant called as Tulsi in India and you can notice uh, that amount of details you get when you capture in a zoom shot. Here are a few more random clicks while I was traveling around the city and you can see a lot of uh, details while traveling. Now here is another important capture. This is the star track mode where you can start following all the stars and the moon while you keep your capture a camera in one specific location. So I didn't again use a tripod, I just placed it on my floor and started recording it and after second try you could notice that it took around 23 minutes to capture this photo which is the last one but it came out to be pretty good so it clearly helps uh, tells me that i should have waited probably for an hour to get a very good shot but this is something i don't even, I even have to look into the settings set up the iso or the aperture or any other options it does its job perfectly and that's one of the best advantage of this smartphone's camera now here is a food photo again uh, in galaxy s7 we had a specific cam uh, galaxy camera's uh, food mode option where it actually enhanced the foot photos by focusing on one area and also over saturating the photos but in this case you just have to shoot the photo and your job is done let me know in your thoughts what do you think about all these captures this is another uh, evening shot 
a random shot on our terrace and here is my daughter's photo if you can notice i didn't have to do anything just pull out the camera and shoot a photo another bug again that's a cockroach probably but you can notice the details which you get and this was again in low light or you can say in the night time with the flash the flash didn't really do a good job because it uh, fired up a lot of light and uh, still it came out to be decent enough here is another capture in daylight again uh, with the depth of field uh, simulated mode and you can see the camera has done a great job again i uh, this is something which i would generally see with a dslr's camera but this was able to do the job and that's what is i expect from a smartphone's camera here are a few more foot photos again my wife had uh, joined some kind of uh, competition and i had captured some random photos i didn't use any other option or even a manual mode the camera comes with a pro mode for your information but i didn't use any of those and i was able to capture some great photos if you can notice all these uh, photos one by one now the photos have come out to be great no doubt about that and uh, these are all being seen on large screen display you can notice here and there's no pixelation or any noise even when they are captured in the low light mode now here let's talk about the front camera the front camera comes with a uh, 8 megapixel uh, sensor and uh, it comes with the aperture of f2.2 it also does a decent job but it's not again part powered with the leica technology or the post processing but it still does a great job and uh, this is what are few of the camera samples again you can notice there's a little uh, blur and very if you can notice the hand in this capture has been blurred and uh, but it's still a decent it uh, still does a decent job in terms of the details in terms of the post processing you can also notice that you can also change the background while you select the wide aperture effects and you can uh, make a, ch a lot of changes in the background for the final captures so well, these were the different uh, captures which I had done with the Huawei P9 smartphone. I would still consider this as a DSLR replacement for an amateur who uses a DSLR with the auto mode on and this is something which could replace all his uh, requirements. Now here finally let me show you the night mode feature. In the night mode this is a capture which I just done last night at 12 o'clock and uh, 10 minutes probably 12 10 am and uh, you can find all the exif, exif information on our detailed review. So, go through all the camera mode and the options and everything this is the night mode capture and you can see there's nothing lit up and this is how it looks but once you enable the night mode you could see a decent amount of difference you could see a lot of uh, brightness and uh, could also see notice a few other buildings in the locality wherein it was earlier completely dark now under the night mode you have some pro options wherein you can keep the iso to 1600 and also keep the aperture open for four seconds now that's what i did and you would be shocked to see the final capture which came out to be this looked like an evening capture this for your information is again captured at 12 o'clock in the night now this is more or less looking like a spy camera shot which i captured without a tripod again and this was just i was holding the phone for four seconds now the next capture is for eight seconds so the longer the duration the picture turns out to be better and to only prove that this was captured in the low light is that there were some street lights in the night so this is uh, what is the camera's uh, capability with this smartphone's uh, dual camera technology which is the 12 megapixel sensor technology which is again partnered with leica again uh, this is what the product talks about and this is what you get with the huawei p9 smartphones camera and now finally one more thing which is very interesting this smartphone comes with a watermark feature where you can change different watermarks depending on the location and the options or the food photos or any other modes which you capture in so you get options like time location weather mood and food wherein you can select from a range of different uh, camera modes which you can notice here now these are different uh, camera modes watermark modes which you can select from and you can add it to all your photos in my case i like the smartphone's camera so i wanted to have the mention of uh, huawei p9 or the leica's dual camera so in all these photos you would notice that watermark but now i feel i should be removing that because that's the end of this review now let's talk about the video capabilities the device comes with a full hd video recording not a 4k recording which is something which has been a trend in the recent times and that's something one of the biggest con with this smartphone's camera i was hoping that it would come with a video 4k video recording but that said this comes with a beauty video recording mode which means that it would enhance and remove all your pimples acne and every other thing and makes you look beautiful at least in the smartphone uh, video recording and talking about the other things uh, the camera also comes with a slow motion feature wherein it records slow motion videos in 720p so here is a capture of the same and uh, and do make a note that none of the slow motion videos actually turn out to be in slow motion when you move the media to youtube or even to your computer but they play in slow motion on google photos or even on your smartphone so that's something which huawei should be fixing in their software uh, updates 
Moving forward to another camera video sample, you can notice that this is another video camera sample wherein you can notice that uh, the video has turned out to be pretty good but uh, the digital uh, OIS is doing its job to some fair extent but not to the extent you would be seeing with the optical image stabilization. So that's an another thing which uh, Huawei should be adding to this smartphone's camera. Now here is the final review of this smartphone. Talking about the Huawei P9, this is the best smartphone I would say in terms of the camera at the price point of around 35,000 rupees. It all depends on what price you're purchasing it at. At this price point at around 30,000 rupees or 35,000 rupees, there's no other smartphone which offers you with this kind of features and that's where the dual camera technology comes into play. If you have a higher budget, then no doubt the Galaxy S7 is something you should be taking a look at. This is the best smartphone we have reviewed and we think at this moment or you can say period, this is something you should be taking a look at. Apart from that, in terms of the performance, it's a little bit choppier here and there and the battery does last a day. But missing out the fast charging and the wireless charging is another key point which you should be making note of. At least fast charging is something the brand should have actually offered in this smartphone. Again, Huawei has just uh, patented the supercharged technology which means that probably in the future lineup we would be seeing fast charging features. But at this moment, that's one important po point which you should be taking a note of. And apart from that, the softer thing is again something which Huawei should take a note of. The brand should be offering user an uh, option of customizing the same by offering them the stock UI and then they could be offered with an uh, option of either using their UI or else any other third party launcher. That's it. Overall, a decent smartphone if it's launched at around 30,000 to 35,000 rupees and that's something you should be taking a look at. This was a detailed review of the Huawei's P9 smartphone. Stay tuned for phone for more videos like this. Let us know in the comment section if you have any queries about this smartphone and I'm happy to assist you on the same. Thank you.